Hey guys, this is Icarus 2. This is an upgraded version of Icarus, which is an electric ducted fan based uh, vertical takeoff and landing uh, UAV. I'm not going to call it drone because drone technically is something that flies by itself, and we need to at least challenge technology connections level of pedanticness a little bit here. But yeah, if you want to check out the original video on this from uh, 2019, I think it was, go click on the link up here somewhere. Uh, this was a, a real challenge to get flying. Uh, the biggest problem was the gyroscopic force, forces due to the high-speed rotations of the fan. And it was a significant amount of effort to, to, to get this running. Uh, yeah, again, check out the video. It's a really interesting story of how that worked. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to solve a lot of the problems that uh, uh, plagued this. And Icarus 2 has solved a lot of them simply by uh, doubling everything. I've upgraded to uh, these JP Hobby uh, EDFs. They're one of the few ones I could find that actually have counter-rotating versions. You can see these two are mirror images of each other. And that's completely solved the uh, gyroscopic precession problem. Yep. Yeah, this thing hovers pretty well, and it's uh, it's pretty interesting to fly. It's it's very different from a normal uh, quad. It it responds much slower, uh, but yeah, like, I'll go over a few of the differences between these two and sort of the specs and uh, what this has. So, yeah, the the old one here, uh, Icarus One, was based on a uh, just a cheap uh, 90, uh, 90 millimeter EDF. These this is also ninety millimeter, but they're yeah, they're as I said before, they're much better built. They're uh, all machined out of uh, aluminum. I'm really impressed with the, the quality of these EDFs. They're they're not too expensive. They're I think $170 each. Uh, but yeah, this is significantly higher performance. Um, this does, I think it weighs about, with batteries, weighs about one kilo and has about two kilograms of thrust or so. This weighs, uh, in its current configuration, it's very heavy, about, about three kilograms. And uh, the EDF should be able to do about five kilos thrust each, so about uh, about ten. So it has to show about three to one thrust to weight ratio. I think it'll be it has a little bit less just because the uh, the batteries the volt battery voltage will sag a bit. Um, this one it runs on, runs on six S, and uh, this one runs on twelve. And it, the um, motors also draw a lot more current. Both the fans together draw something on the order of two hundred and twenty amps at forty four volts. So a bit of, around 10 kilowatts or so. The, I got the um, the highest C uh, rated batteries I could find on uh, on Hobby King at least. These are 75 C, and I think that's not enough. And I think they don't even quite match their uh, their advertised spec, but uh, it'll kind of have to do for now. The frame on this is uh, printed on the Form Two. Um, I've had mixed results with this. The the the, the high resolution of the parts is is really really nice. However, the, um, there's an issue with, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty brittle material, so it actually it uh, cracks and breaks pretty easily. I actually think I prefer the uh, ABS FDM prints used on the on Icarus 1. Uh, it's pretty much, in terms of control, it's, it's pretty similar. Um, there's, it has, uh, Icarus 1 has uh, four individually uh, thrust uh, directable veins. Uh, Icarus 2 only has two per per fan because there's uh, there's two of them. This actually does make the veins quite a bit simpler, and I think they uh, are a little bit more effective at uh, at directing the air. But ultimately, both of them need uh, need four servos, so uh, that's pretty much the same. 
the motor controllers on this are uh, these 160 amp 14S ones, which are kind of overkill for this uh, application. These motors don't draw anywhere near that much power, and we don't need uh, uh, 14S on the, tw on the uh, 12S motors. Although I was thinking of going to um, larger, uh, adding a adding 2s to bring it up to 16s just so that the when it sag the voltage sags when you're at high current it won't uh, sag to such a such a low voltage uh, other than that it's got the same cc3d flight controller uh, I have the receiver out right now because I'm working on some uh, on uh, working on a new version of this yeah there's a, I have a lot there's a lot of opportunities for weight reduction there's a lot of wiring on this yeah, the motor controllers are heavy the frame is a lot heavier than uh, than it needs to be, but uh, but it all works sort of as a as a prototype. Uh, one thing I've done on this that I think is slightly novel is uh, an, an anti backlash system. So there's these springs here that pull on the on the veins, and this it sort of um, if I can show you this, it sort of it keeps them at one side of the backlash at all times. So if you turn the servo even in the the tiniest little amount, the veins uh, the veins actually move uh, move properly or move. It doesn't have. You don't have to like take up all of the uh, control backlash, which and this significantly improves the uh, controllability or the, the the hover stability of the of the craft. Because otherwise, the the servos are constantly jostling between their two uh, the the two uh, the positions need to needed to maintain stability uh, due to the backlash. Like it'll constantly have to jitter back and forth to keep itself in in center. And this virtually completely solves that. Uh, th this also this works because of the design of the veins, where if you can see, there's a portion that is uh, in front of the pivot points, and this allows uh, the airflow to sort of it cancels out the torque, the torque on the veins, and that's why this this uh, this approach works. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really useful for improving the stability of the craft. And this anti-backlash system even uh, accounts for the backlash of the, the gear train in the servos. As long as the spring is strong enough, the, the, the uh, entire gear train is preloaded to, to one side. So that even, yeah, as long as the, when the veins are near the middle and there's minimal torque, it's, yeah, it just it completely solves the whole backlash problem. Uh, when I was developing this, or uh, getting it flying initially, it was just... It was an order of magnitude easier than this. Like literally, the the initial default settings for the flight controller. I just uh, started it up and just sort of throttled it up and sort of held it and felt how it uh, felt in terms of stability. And it was actually reasonably stable. Uh, this thing was just completely unstable with any settings, any PID, anything I could do until I changed the firmware in the flight controller to uh, apply some uh, uh, special corrections for the gyroscopic. Uh, Procession forces um, ended up having to apply a to to take the angular rate, turn it 90 degrees, and apply that as a an offset to the servo output, so that as the craft translated, it would direct um, it would vector thrust at 90 degrees to the if you, if you moved it this way, it would vector thrust that way to compensate for the gyroscopic precession forces, and of course with the uh, beautiful counter rotating fans on this. That's just completely unnecessary. It was just so stable. Yeah, I think within ten or twenty minutes, I had the thing completely stable and flying. It was it was just so so easy. I've been playing around with the PID values for the last uh, half hour or so, and I think I've got something pretty good now. It's actually uh, pretty controllable. Oh, got to arm it first. Uh, 
Uh, that that was really good. Uh, I've kind of taken this as far as I can. It's it's way too heavy. Is the motor controllers are too heavy. It needs a lot of work. So I'm actually already working on a third version. And uh, so I think this video is going to be pretty short. I'll just leave you with some uh, uh, shots of this flying and uh, the initial test flights and that kind of stuff. Oh, this thing is blowing dust everywhere. But that is really good. Has really good control. I like that. I was worried about the feedback loops, the PIDs having problems because the effective gain of the system changes with the throttle, but so far uh, no real oscillations. And I think I spoke a little bit too soon about the oscillations. I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit. Ultimately I'd like to set up um, what they call thrust PID scaling, which scales the PID constants inversely proportionally to the throttle to somewhat compensate for this uh, this problem, but I don't really I don't know how that maps from the current gains to the new scaled gain, so I don't want to just go and change that right now. So I'm just going to tweak them down a little bit. This is Icarus 3. So yeah, we're back to the uh, FDM 3D printer. It's pretty much pretty much exactly the same thing, but yeah, just changed all of the problems. So the huge controllers are changed to these little tiny ones from uh, advanced power drives. These are incredibly light. They're basically just uh, just like a printed circuit board, and they're like one tenth the weight of those. And then the frame is much lighter, and everything is just so much so much lighter. Uh, this is so this, uh, this with batteries weighs about the same as this without batteries. Uh, it's incredible. It goes from about 3.1 kilos to 2.2 kilos, uh, sort of a loaded weight. But yeah, this still has some work. I'm trying to, uh, trying to bring up the receiver connection. I'm using a different... Uh, uh, this one uses the CC3D flight controller. This one I've switched to a... Um, uh, what was it called? A Skyline... It's a... Uh, one that uses base flight or clean flight... Uh, Nase 32 compatible. Um, yeah, finding some differences. It's uh, does some things better, some things worse. It's just yeah, a fight to sort of to get it working with this. But yeah, um, when I get this running, I'll uh, get to you a new video. Thanks for watching.